What's the best superpower that a merc could have? Well, invisibility would be pretty cool, and super strength would be dope, but our favorite fourth wall breaking anti-hero makes a pretty strong case for super regeneration. So how does it work? You get that? Wade Wilson, AKA Deadpool, this is called B-roll. Wade Wilson, AKA Deadpool, is maybe the only superhero with a healing factor better than the mutant Wolverines, which his healing factor is derived from. He gains his abilities in an experiment undertaken to combat his rapidly spreading cancer. He can recover from almost anything, from bullet wounds to stabbings to full decapitations. Superpowers like this are hard to suss out scientifically. Regeneration is a complicated thing. This salamander, for example, we have no idea why it can regrow a limb after losing one and we can't. But I think Deadpool is different. The secret is in his disease. Cancer is a terrible disease, but it may just give Deadpool his powers. We haven't cured cancer yet because cancer isn't just one disease, it is many. There are many different types of cancers that affect the body in many different types of ways. Even on the tumor level, cancer grows so quickly that if you cut a tumor in half and sequence its genes, one half would be genetically distinct from the other half. Generally speaking, cancer kills when some cells in your body start growing out of control and form masses that either impede or interfere with normal bodily functions until you can't function anymore. But your cells are not defenseless. Every single cell in your body tries to make sure that tumors never form in the first place. Two groups of genes are usually involved when cancer begins, oncogenes and tumor suppressor genes. You can think of these kind of like the gas and brake pedals of cell division. Proto-oncogenes, or before they become the bad kind, oncogenes, are the gas of cell division and help cells divide. Tumor suppressor genes, on the other hand, are there like the brakes to make sure that this division doesn't get out of control and can tell cells when to die. It's a fine balance between these two groups of genes that helps stop cancer before it starts. But what if you could control when to hit the gas and pump the brakes of cell division? This is a picture of an axolotl that I took at a lab in MIT. Did I leave the steamer on? No. The axolotl is an incredible and incredibly adorable salamander with a truly superhero worthy healing factor. It can regrow any limb cut off at any place any number of times without scarring. It can regrow eyes, its spinal cord, and even parts of its brain. It's the Deadpool of scientific research. We are still trying to figure out how the axolotl does it, but we do know that both oncogenes and tumor suppressor genes are involved. When the little salamander loses a limb, for example, we know that the cell at the base of the wound start to change and reform into the kinds of cells found when limbs first form. Inside this hunk of cells, or blastema, research has found that there's initial surge of oncogene expression. Remember the genes that can cause cancer in us when cell division gets out of control, like the gas, that is soon suppressed by tumor suppressor genes, the breaks, as a new limb takes shape. Deadpool's powers are already linked to his cancer and therefore his cancer regulating genes. Oh wait, I suddenly feel like I should be photobombing at a convention. Wade Wilson then, like the axolotl, has incredible control over his oncogenes and tumor suppressor genes. That's how Deadpool works. When Deadpool is shot, for example, cells at the base of the injury start to suppress the tumor suppressor genes and the oncogenes ramp way up to heal the injury and then the brakes are put back on by the suppressor genes and he's as good as new. And we do know that in the comics it has been established that if he didn't have control over his tumor suppressor genes or genes like this, that cell division in his body would expand out of control and he would die finally, maybe, I don't know. And there's another connection between Deadpool and the axolotl as well. The little salamander is extremely cancer resistant, like a thousand times more cancer resistant than mammals are. No doubt it's tumor suppressor genes come into play like they would have to if Deadpool was keeping a terrible cancer in check. By studying these genes, one day we may unlock the ability for humans to regenerate in this way, but not yet. We have to look to nature because it already has a Deadpool because science.
episode's over. Go home. Bye. Thank you so much for watching. You know that old saying that you're never more than a few feet away from spiders? Well, it's probably true. In the first uh, census of all the different insect and arachnid members that share your home, uh, research has found that, yeah, you're probably never more than a few feet from a spider because they found over 500 different species of creepy crawlies in the average house. A except for daddy long legs. They're not spiders. Daddy long legs aren't spiders. They're, uh, they're a different uh, class altogether, um, and they're colloquially called harvest men, and they're not the most venomous thing with eight legs either. Uh, we know that, and they can't pierce your skin with their fangs, and they're not even hollow. So, suck it up. <laughs>